Berberine is an alkaloid compound that you find actually in a lot of different herbs, uh, some of them being the Indian barberry, golden seal, and certain kinds of turmeric. Um, now, barberry, Indian barberry is the one where it's most commonly sourced from when people are making berberine supplements. Uh, it's, but it's also found in other things like uh, coptis and philodendron, which are two herbs that have been traditionally used in China for thousands of years for treatment of diabetes. So it, you find it all over the place, but mostly you're going to be looking at getting it in a supplement form isolated from Indian barberry. Uh, it tastes horrible, by the way, so don't ever make the mistake of getting it in powder. It's like it's one of the worst tasting things out there. Even when you get it in capsules, like small amounts of the powder will make it you know, sneak out of the capsule, and so you're gonna taste it a little bit when you're just taking the capsules usually. It's gross, but this stuff is so good for so many areas of health that <laughs> it's worth it. Uh, so one of the first things we wanna look at here is how it affects insulin resistance and blood sugar balance. So there was a three month study, and this is what's talked about the most, this specific study where they found that it controlled blood sugar and lipid metabolism as effectively as the prescription drug metformin, which is the most commonly prescribed drug for diabetes. And this is when people were taking berberine uh, as 500 milligrams two to three times a day. 500 milligrams three times a day is the most common recommendation because berberine has a very short metabolic half-life in the body, so it doesn't it doesn't hang around for that long. And it's, the, it's also working on other things. It's helping with high blood pressure. It's helping with cholesterol, as supported by the research. And how is it doing all of these things, right? Because it's it, it's if it's helping so many areas of health, it's sometimes interesting to see. Okay, is there something upstream uh, that is really improving? Like when we look at things like you know like NMN or nicotinamide riboside, you see that these okay, these are increasing NAD, thereby making uh, the mitochondria work better and producing more ATP, and that's how everything works better. Well, what's happening here with berberine is that it's able to activate what's called AMPK. This AMPK is what it's also called. This is an enzyme that is often called the metabolic master switch that boosts fat burning metabolism uh, in the mitochondria actually and helps to regulate the way your body is using blood sugar. So when you can activate the AMPK enzyme, you're making serious moves in pushing your health in a positive direction. So other things that you see in the research, and this is likely resulting from what's happening with the blood sugar management and the AMPK pathway, uh, is that it has protective effects for uh, cognitive decline. You often hear about Alzheimer's these days being now understood to be kind of like type three diabetes. So no wonder something that is gonna manage your blood sugar very effectively is gonna help prevent Alzheimer's. Uh, now, another area that we can look at in terms of how berberine is working is that it appears to very effectively kill off bad bacteria while leaving the good bacteria unharmed and really shift the balance in the gut microbiome. So it is also shown to really be helpful with SIBO, which is small intestinal bacteria overgrowth uh, because of the way it's able to kill off the bacteria there because you don't want a lot of bacteria actually growing in your small intestine so you want to kill those guys off and get everything pushed back into the large intestine. Now it's also uh, just in some other research uh, has been shown to have anti-inflammatory effects and they've actually shown that um, it helps to mitigate some of the damage. Not, not, it's not the same as not smoking, but it's helping to mitigate a lot of the inflammatory damage inflicted by smoking cigarettes. Now that's, again, not an excuse to say it's okay to go smoke cigarettes as long as you're taking berberine, but it's reasonably worthwhile to say, okay, if you have a loved one who will not quit smoking, at least have them take berberine, you know, do something in a positive direction to, to mitigate some of the damage there. And so you mentioned in your question PCOS as well. Of course, in a lot of PCOS situations, insulin resistance is a huge factor. So berberine is a great thing to be taking and to be aware of. And, and also, you know, side note, make sure you're really getting high quality sleep because sleep is a huge factor in blood sugar regulation as well. Uh, but specific to this, berberine actually was shown to improve insulin resist resistance and improve fertility and live birth rates in PCOS affected women. So you're on the right path here. Berberine is a great herb to be looking at. <music>